Hi, I'm Roger Sanchez, also known as the S-Man. Welcome to my studio. Today, we're gonna to be doing the Fader Pro course on how I produced my track as the S-Man called Dangerous Thoughts. There are no tricks or gimmicks here. This is actually, from start to finish, how I make my music. I work on Logic with Ableton Rewired, and today you're gonna to get a chance to see exactly all the techniques on how I produce, write, EQ, and create a lot of my tracks. And I work inside of my laptop most of the time because I'm always on the road. So I've put together a portable studio setup that I've adopted to my actual full studio setup. You're also gonna get a chance to access all the source files so you yourself can go off after taking this course and produce a track of your own. You'll be able to know exactly what I've done with my recording of my vocals, how I process them, how I come up with my beats, how I do my arrangements, from start to finish, this is a full comprehensive course. So now let's get started. Kick. One thing that's very important to note is when you're in Ableton, you cannot use any of the EQs, effects, or any of the plugins from an external program if you're rewiring it through logic, which means whatever sound, the way it is right here in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I wanna EQ this in a different way later on. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna program the actual drum pattern in Ableton so that I can do this very, very quickly. So here you have an eight bar straight kick pattern. So now what I love about Ableton is the fact that it has this a feature that allows you to glue this into an eight bar pattern by simply highlighting it from bar one to bar nine, Apple J, and it consolidates the eight bars. And now you've got a full eight bar pattern. Okay, so now, you know, i am got a straight kick. I wanna put a clap on it. Okay. So now I'll put the clap in. Nice dirty clap. And I'll highlight that with the space in front of it. And the reason I do that is because I know I'm gonna want the clap to fall in the same place. I'll put the space in front of it, Apple D, copy it all the way forward. And this is a way that I tend to construct my beats very, very quickly. And I'll get more intricate later with how I wanna switch up some of the vibes. So I just want a basic kick and clap. This allows me to just get a basic beat started so that I can get very creative with the other sounds, the bass line, the chords and everything else. And that way later on, I can come back to the beat if I then want to change it, but I'll have done it very, very quickly. So here we go. Clap. So now I've got a couple of different types of hat loops. All right, I like that little clap loop. All right, I tend to chop these loops so that I don't repeat the same thing every single time. So I like this to give it a little more space because it's got that rolling hi-hat at the end. So and it gives you that little bit of a roll towards the end and I'll space it out and copy it a few times. So here we have that beat already there. So I don't wanna repeat it every single time. I'll Apple D it, and I'll just give it a little more space. So now the full eight bar pattern starts to build up like this. So I've got some preset EQs for some of the sounds that I like to use, and I've put them in the settings. So for the dirty kick, you can see I've got quite a few different settings. And I always find it really useful to save the presets for the different sounds and different kicks. If you're using a particular clap that you love a lot, or if you're using a particular kick or snare, and you say, okay, I've got the perfect way that I want it to sound, save the preset, and then it saves it into the preset folder, and then you can recall it at a later date. So now I've got my dirty kick. I'm going to solo that. 
and I've used the compression from the logic folder and it has a particularly interesting wooden sound that I want on this particular kick but it still makes it kind of big kind of round and very dirty very thumpy and I, that's particularly what I wanted for this one it's got a bit of that kind of serrated edge distortion on the kick for this particular S-Man track I want it to be have more of a distorted grimy sound I've used an alloy the isotope alloy is one of my favorite EQs. I use it on almost every track. Uh, the only thing is, as you stack them up, they tend to suck up a lot of CPU. So I tend to use them primarily on my drums and then my vocals. And sometimes I may even print occasionally an EQ if I really, really love it on the sound. So here's the kick. Boost up the bottom end, get a little bit more bass response on it. And I like the metering that it does so you can get a sense of where the sound is. I want to run through these very quickly. You know, this is my S-Man project, which is a lot more underground, a lot dirtier synths, dirtier bass line. It's all about the big beats. And I want to keep it simple, but build very, very quickly. And what I, what I always do is I start playing very quickly with some of the synths that I like to work with a lot. But with the S-Man projects, I always want to keep it gritty and grimy, especially with the type of drums and everything that I layer on top of the sketch. Now, right now, I've set up an interesting um, build up for the intro. We're going to get into it in terms of the verse now. There's another sound that I kind of want to add on to as we get into the, the verse, as we go straight into this bass line. This is where I'm imagining I'm going to get my vocal in. I'm going to record. I've got a vocal idea that I had in mind, a little bit of a rap type of thing, but I had an idea of what I wanted to do with it. But before we get into that, let's add a little more detail to the verse section. As I load these synths in, they're pretty heavy on the CPU side. Since I'm working off of my laptop, which is the, the thing that I've taken around the world to be able to create while I'm on the road, I kind of have to get creative with the amount of CPU usage. And um, my particular setup, I have an SSD 750 gig internal card. And the reason I use the SSD is to create stability uh, as opposed to having a spinning drive. So it accesses sounds and information a lot faster. Now the next upgrade I'm going to get, I'll probably put a one terabyte drive in. But at the time, I have a 750 uh, gigabyte drive, which means I can still operate pretty fast. But what starts to happen now is as I start building into it, I'm starting to use more CPU usage. So I'll show you something that I do even prior to finishing a track. If I've got a rough idea of what I want to do at the moment and I want to conserve some CPU usage, what I'll do is I'll just have a quick structure. Let's say these drums where I'm using more plug-in power to do the EQs, I'll just take, I'm gonna work on this section. I'm just gonna copy this over again. And for the time being, I have a rough structure, which I will then change later. But just to give myself a bit more space to pull up synths, then I'll freeze them. And what that does is, in essence, freezing, it's like taking a photograph of the track. And each of these will not now actively use CPU um, um, power. It'll just take a photograph, in essence, um, audio photograph of what's going on, which then lowers your CPU usage. And what I'll do is I'll just highlight this to go up to this point. It'll then allow me the drums. You will not be able to change them while you're in freeze mode but it'll drop a little bit of the CPU usage down, which means I can use more plugins until I max it out. And once I start maxing it out, then I start bouncing down the individual sounds once I'm happy with them into audio so that I can stop using the plugins, which use up more CPU usage. So this is kind of like, I call that like the on the fly 
production mix down technique. As I'm producing, I'm also EQing the sound. So even though they're not the final EQ, it's almost like mixing as I produce. Um, this way, it's kind of where I get my headspace in terms of how I'm doing these tracks and what they're gonna sound like at the end. Right now it's time for me to drop in my vocals and I've been kicking around this idea in my head. So I think I'm going to start it from a little bit closer to the beginning of the track. Now I'm using the Apogee Duet, which has this page, which allows you to control the input, the output, and also the mixer, which lets you monitor your vocals. You could raise it or lower it. This gives you the software return as in what's coming out of the program with Logic. And this is what sends it out as the master. So right now, what I've noticed working with this system is if I want to audition and listen to something in Logic, I'll mute the actual auditioning on the Apogee because that way I don't get the echo and it gives it a bit of a delayed reaction. I go back here, I've armed an audio track. Now it's time for me to pull my mic up. And this little, I call this like the eyeball smurf. Um, this is known as the, the Chaotica Eye. And what this does is I got this when I was in Ibiza. The maker of this company gave me this. So you could literally go out in the middle of a field and it's almost like an enclosed vocal booth. And what this does is it cuts off a lot of the background noise. And I found when I'm recording my vocals inside the control room, this gives you a very clean cut, dry vocal where you don't hear a lot of the transient noise that's going on. I've set it up on an arm so it's easy for me to work at my station with it. But even so, I've muted the microphone, the overhead speaker sounds so I don't get that on my headphones. So I'm going to take it back to the very beginning and just kind of flow with it. Let me turn off that uh, metronome that's clicking in my headphone. Ah. Oh. Dropped in my vocal there. I'm going to put the microphone out of the way, take it out of record. <laughs> just cut that down even a little bit more just to get that a little tighter. Chop this up a little bit more. <laughs> I'm gonna actually try the other way. So now we got a little bit of a machine gun type of effect. 
So you're not just saying ass. You can just about get away with it on radio. If radio ever decides to play it. But I just like doing something a little bit more creative anyway. Sometimes you got to magnify it a little bit just to get that edge. The assholes need to stay in. So now I've taken the beginning of that. Let me just get this chopped up a little bit more. Suck the assholes need to stay. All right. So now I've got the treatment of what I want that to sound like. I'm going to copy that over to the second half. And now here we have the verse structure. I've been thinking about how y'all all sound the same. Your style is mad fake like that rep that you claim. Sucker ass fools need to stay inside their lane. If they don't, it's lights out like a bullet to the brain. I've been thinking about. I've got a scream that I want to add on to it. A James Brown type of thing. Let's see where I want to place that at. Bow. Yeah, a little bit earlier. Bow. Wow. Yep. We got that James Brown type of feel. Oops, wrong place. Let me put a little bit of compression. Get that opto vocal there. Kind of want to still keep it sounding dirty. Put a little bit of channel EQ on that. Put up a little bit of the reverb on the bus. Nice. Now I want to build up the breakdown and put some synths in it. So I'm going to copy my original synth from the intro. And then I'm going to float it. I think about, uh, I'm going to put it right around the middle there. So as the snare starts to build up, I'm going to drop that synth in. Now, one thing that I, and again, I'm going to save it. Now, one thing that I realize is I'm going to want to do something vocally in this segment. So I'm going to take one of the other audio sections. And let me take one of the... need to stay inside their lane. If they don't, it's lights out. That little menacing, if they don't, it's lights out, is what I want to use. So... If they don't, it slides out. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to actually put it here for the time being. Let me see how that drops out. I've been thinking, if they don't, it slides out. I'm going to keep on repeating that. This fade tool off of it for a second. If they don't, it slides out. I continue with the fade tool to make sure we don't get that clip at the end. 
If they don't, it's lights out. Okay, let me just get a little bit more of that tea in there. If they don't, it's lights out. Okay. Repeat that. If they don't, it's lights out. If they don't, it's lights out. Expand it to the full phrase. If they don't, it's lights out like a bullet tooth. Out like a bullet to the brain. Ah, get the full pronunciation. Like a bullet to the brain. I'm going to repeat that segment again. To the brain, if they don't, it's lights out. I want to also do that chop from the, like I did in the earlier segments with the ah. Uh, but do it like this. The brain, if they don't, it's lights out. It. Get the right timing for it. Just expand this a little bit. To the brain, if they don't, it's lights out. It. Move forward, drag it. Don't it's lights out. It. Brain, if they don't, it's lights out. It. Lights out. Lights out. If they don't, it's lights out. If, if they don't, it's... Move that a little bit earlier. If they don't, it's lights out. If, if they don't, it... A little too early. Sometimes I just do this via trial and error just to kind of get the exact timing that I want. Belongs right there. Here we go. Get that little chopping sample nice type of tree. So I'm building up to this. And that's how I made my track as the S Man Dangerous Thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed taking this course. I really enjoyed making it. And I encourage you to take this as many times as you feel necessary until you feel totally comfortable with every single aspect of what I've done. And you can go off on your own and make your own tracks. Don't forget, it's all about the music and creativity. Now go find your own road. I'll see you on the dance floor.